start to stream. Hey, my test, I'm back. I hope you can hear me this time. I tried for the second time, but there was no audio. And this time, I am here again. I hope I am. you can hear me this time. Hopefully, everything's fine. Woo -hoo. All right. Is this the one with continuation? The one with... Yay, I think I now it's now okay. Hi, Eliazar. Thank you and sorry for the inconvenience. Okay. Is there an audio now, Eliazar? My audio na ba? Sorry. Ah, this is really the problem with with uh, internet. Anyway, it's normal. It normally happens. But thank you for staying tuned, okay? I'll just invite one more friend, okay? Here. All right, so let's continue. If everything's okay, we will continue, okay? Maybe I'll just wait for... Okay, thank you, guys. Okay, uh, saan na ba tayo? Where were we? I forgot. Okay, I think we were in question number six, right? Okay. I'll show you. Yep, okay. So, uh, for sure. Question number six, right, was India is starting to deal with the neglect of its elderly population. Yep. All right, India is starting to deal. Uh, again, for number six, the answer is false because your our co context here or our text shows the data about India that they have physical abuse. You see this? They have physical and mental abuse, including neglect, but only the data. It doesn't show here that um, they are beginning to or they are starting to deal with the situation, right? So, Eliezer, let's, can we continue now? Okay, Naba, can we continue with number seven? So, I'll just wait for Lori. For sure, she will be back very soon, okay? So, uh, Joe Bell, can I continue? Is it okay? I'll just continue, okay? Number seven. Bolivian families look after their elderly relatives better than any other... What's the last one? Than any other blank. Okay, I'll show you. Okay, Joe Bell, so we will continue, okay? Than any other developing country. So we'll go, go back. So to answer that, I'll read the last paragraph. By contrast, the UN report cited the case of Bolivia as an example of good practice in the developing world. All Bolivians over the age of 60 get a pension that is the equivalent of about $30 or 19 pounds a month. Bolivia suffers from frequent flooding and landslide, and other people there have been organized into brigadas blancas, white-haired brigades. They help with preparations for emergencies and accessing humanitarian aid. So as to the question, the question again was, Bolivian families look after their elderly. The answer is not given. Not given, obviously, because in this paragraph, paragraph 7, it just provides uh, data. It just gives us a data, and it doesn't give us information whether they look after their elderly, okay? They have good practices. Uh, they just have good practices. It's here. And then they have the figures, the money that they are given pension or they receive pension, the elderly receive pension. But as to being taken care of or, yeah, being looked after, looked after by their youngs, it's not provided here. So now for number seven, the answer is not given. All right. So are we clear now with number seven? Jobel and Eliezer, are we clear now with number seven? Because if we're clear now, then we'll start, we'll continue with the next part. We'll, we will be done with the true, false, not given part of this lesson, okay? Clear, Eliezer. Okay, so I'll continue. Jobel, I'll continue now, okay? So, yes, all right. So we'll continue with the last part, matching heads, okay? So, I hope Lori will be back. Anyway, Eliazar, I believe you already reached Lori, okay? So, just tell her, okay? Because the next part, Jobel, is this, um, the matching headings part. 
For the matching headings part, we have number one until number 10. One is town facilities. Two is colonization. Three is urban divisions. Four is architectural home styles. Five is types of settlements. Six is historical foundations. Seven is domestic arrangements. Eight is city defenses. And nine is the residences of the rulers. And number 10 is government buildings. So I'll give you two minutes to read and take a screenshot, please. Because for this part, what you're going to do is uh, you will match paragraph A. Uh, which item here in the list does paragraph A talk about or match? Okay, so that's the goal for matching headings. These lists are the headings and these are our paragraphs, okay? So one minute and 30 seconds left for you. All right. Take screenshot, guys. And then. One, barely one minute left. Barely one minute left, okay? And then I'll show you the next paragraphs, okay? Then you may begin answering. Hello, JC. Ah, Ate, this is my IELTS class. I have some students, okay? From the Philippines, from Thailand. So, hello, Ate, hi. Okay, so guys, wait, no. So you may now take screenshot of this page. And then I'll go to the next page, okay? Shout out to Jay-Z, my ate, my very beautiful ate from the other part of the world. Anyway. Oh, all right. So, Eliazar, can I now proceed to uh, page number two? So, let me just explain for a while before the time ends for this page this is now matching headings okay we have here headings we have lists these are our headings okay we have town facilities you are going to decide which heading does each paragraph belong or talk about example paragraph a which heading does paragraph a talk about so you are going to answer your choice at the jay-z no problem thank you okay uh you have to decide. You just have to match, okay? Then I will not go back to this page later, okay? So please take screenshots and then I'll not go back to this page anymore, all right? So the Yoruba people of Nigeria classify their towns in two ways. Permanent towns with their own governments are called Ilo, whereas temporary settlements set up to support work in the country are Aba. Although Ilo tend to be larger than Aba, the distinction is not one of size. Some Abba are not large, while declining Ilo can be small but of purpose. There is no typical Yoruba town, but some features are common to most towns. So you have to decide. Hey, wait, sorry. Are the text too small for you? I will make it bigger, okay? I hope the text, oh, wait, I'll go back. I'll just set up, okay? For a while, hold on, guys. Here. I'll give you the full text, okay, for your reference. All right. This time, I hope the text is bigger. Okay, sorry for that. Anyway. Okay, so there you go. Then, uh, letter B. In the 19th century, century, most towns are heavily fortified and the foundations of these walls are sometimes visible. Collecting tolls to enter and exit through the walls was a major source of revenue for the old town rulers as were market fees. The markets were generally located centrally and in small towns, while in large towns there were permanent stands made of corrugated iron or iron or concrete. The market was usually next to the local ruler's palace. Okay, full text in B is not clear. All right, you mean letter B? Okay, yeah, I'll go now to the 
full screen. Okay. Is it still not clear, Eliezer? Okay, yeah, I'll go. I hope this time it's clearer, I think. Okay. Putosa. Oh, really? Ah, because in my screen it's already complete. Anyway. Okay, so uh all right. So I think even if it's uh not complete, Eliazar, can you still give the answer for letter B? Some sentence is not visible. Seriously? Okay, anyway, sorry for that. Anyway, if you think, okay, so this is the thing. Eliezer, if you think you cannot answer letter B, then just uh, skip it, okay? Skip it, and then we'll go to letter C, okay? Or I have an option for you. I think I have an option. I will read letter B slow. I will be slow, and then you have to decide, okay? Is that a deal, Eliezer? Is it okay? I will read this uh, clearly as to the best of my abilities, and then uh, you have to decide which among the list or headings do is the paragraph talking about is that okay better okay in the 19th century most towns were heavily fortified and the foundations of these walls are sometimes visible collecting tolls to enter and exit through the walls was a major source of revenue for the old town rulers as were market fees the markets were generally located centrally and in small towns, while in large towns there were permanent stands made of corrugated iron, iron or concrete. The market was usually next to the local ruler's palace. Which um, heading do you think this paragraph is being talked about? Town facilities, colonization. I don't think it's number two. I'm sorry, but I'm helping you to answer this now. I don't think it's number two. Urban divisions, maybe. Architectural home styles. Remember, Eliezer, consider the word toll. Okay, they were asking for some toll when they enter. Then the, they have fortified uh, heavily. The walls were fortified, heavily fortified. I mean, you see this? Corrugated iron or concrete. Hmm? I hope you realize that. And then they collect tolls when they enter and exit the, the place or the city. Okay, so that's page one, all right? Anyway, I hope you have a screenshot of the headings, okay? Please take screenshot of headings one to ten because I will now proceed to uh, page two, all right? Can I proceed now? Four, three, two, one. And now in page two, okay? So we are now in letter C and letter D. Just tell me if you cannot read this, okay? Yeah, all right, Eliezer, I'm now proceeding. Oh, shout out to my students. They just sent me a message through Messenger. My students from Thailand, they are now back. Hi, and also some students from Bangladesh, they're also online. Hello. Thank you, so I'll now continue, okay? So you have here paragraph C and paragraph D. Choose or decide among the headings which heading talks about paragraph C and paragraph D. Then give your answer, okay? Ah, I now understand Eliazar. So next time, Eliazar, this will not happen again. Actually, Eliazar, only one sentence is missing from the screen. I can see it because I am, I am holding my phone, my second gadget and device. So I, anyway, I will just read for you, Eliezer, okay? I hope you have answered letter C already. I'll now proceed to letter D, okay? Uh, don't you worry. This will not happen again in our next lesson, okay? All right. So I'll give you two minutes to answer letter uh, paragraph C and paragraph D. All right. So two minutes starts now. Paragraph C. The palaces were often very large. In the 1930s, the area of Oyo's palace covered 17 acres and consisted of a series of courtyards surrounded by private and public rooms. After colonization, many of the places were completely or partially demolished. 
Often, the rulers build two-story houses for themselves using some of the palace grounds for government buildings. So what's your answer? Do you consider, consider this after colonization? So consider this, all right? Okay, for it. And then paragraph D, the town is divided into different sections. In some towns, these are regular, extending out from the center of the town like spokes on a wheel, while in others, where space is limited. They are more random. The different areas are further divided into compounds called ili. These vary in size considerably from single dwellings to up to 30 houses. They tend to be larger in the north. Large areas are devoted to government administrative buildings, newer developments such as industrial or... So Eliazar, for you, let me read the last sentence or last line. As industrial or commercial areas or apartment housing for civil servants tends to be built on the edge of the town. That's it. Again, the, la the missing line is commercial areas or apartment housing for civil servants tends to be built on the edge of the town. But you know, Eliazar, even if the last line is missing, I think you can still assume which heading this talks about. All right? So I hope you now have an answer, guys. Choose among these headings. This part is called matching headings part because the headings are given. They are labeled numerically in numerical, in numerical numbers, I up to X or 1 to 10. Then you have to read the paragraph. You have to match which heading does this par these paragraphs talk about, okay? So I'll give you two minutes. Sorry for that. Two minutes starts now. After two minutes, if you still cannot um, answer it, I'm sorry, but I'll proceed to the next question, okay? Anyway, so good luck to you guys. Shout out. Oh, they have sent me a message through messenger my student from hong kong is back also hi how are you feel free to leave a message like you say hi it's a good help already or it's a good indication for me that you are there anyway. okay i'm giving you one minute i'll now keep quiet okay i'm so sorry your teacher is too talkative sure i don't have connection All right, barely one minute left. Okay, so good luck. Which is your answer for paragraph C and paragraph D? You know, for the technique, the, the, yeah, the technique for this, the thing is, you have to look at keywords, okay? Consider the keywords and for sure you'll get the answers. Okay, time is almost up. Then one more paragraph, then I will show the answers. Then you type in your answers. Just write the numeric num numerical numbers like I to X, okay? Four, three, two, one. Time's up. I'm sorry, time's up for this page. I'll go to the last page, okay? Okay, we're now in the last page. Houses. It talks about this time, Eleazar. It's more convenient. I'll give you one minute only for this. I'm sorry. Okay, one minute. All lines are in the screen. Okay, I hope you can see all of them, Eleazar. Okay, houses are rectangular and either have a courtyard in the center or the rooms come off a central corridor. Wait, I'll just... Most social life occurs in the courtyard. They are usually built of hardened mud and have roofs of corrugated iron or in the countryside thatch. Buildings of this material are easy to alter either by knocking down rooms or adding new ones and can be improved by coating the walls with cement. 
Richer people often build their houses of concrete blocks and, if they can afford to, build two-story houses. Within compounds, there can be quite a mixture of building types. Younger, well-educated people may have well-furnished houses, while their older relatives live in mud-walled buildings and sleep on mats on the floor. Well, consider the word countryside. Consider the word sleep on mats on the floor. What is this talking about? So one minute starts now. Okay, then I'll show the answers. Then Eliazar, you can give your answers for let paragraphs A to paragraph E. Okay, Joel, if you are still there, you can give your answer also. All right, so we are now down to the last because I'm also tired. I want to rest off. Okay, thank you for uh, spending time or being with me. After this, uh, I'll give you some reminders about what to do in the reading part, okay? Don't worry because I'm planning to send you a PDF file of reading exams so you can answer at your homes on your own anytime. And then we'll have listening, te te uh, listening test next, okay? 10 seconds left. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And time is up. All right. Time is up, guys. Sorry. Give your answers. Okay, I will wait for your answers. No need to explain, write the word. You just have to write the numeric number. Okay, or the numerics from I to X. Okay. I'll wait for your answer, guys. Choose for paragraphs A to E, okay? I'll just give you a quick look from paragraph A. They talked about the Yoruba people, 19th century, uh, that most towns were heavily fortified. There were really good foundations and walls. So what is this all about? Paragraph C, about the palaces in the 1930s. It talks about the Oyo's Palace. And then after colonization, many of the palaces were completely or partially demolished, okay? And then paragraph B, the town is divided into different sections. What is this talking about? These vary in size, all right? And then there were newer developments such as industrial or commercial areas. What is this talking about? And then paragraph E, houses are rectangular and either have a courtyard. Okay, there you go, Eliazari. Answers are A, type of settlement, urban division, colonization, town facilities, domestic arrangement. So here are our answers, okay? So paragraph A talks about V, types of settlement. Very good, Eliazar. Good job. Paragraph B, Zobel, don't be shy. If you have answers, just type it here, okay? Uh, Eliazar, please just uh, relay this um. No, they relay this activity to Lori later. Okay, thank you, Eliezer. Salamat. Paragraph B is six, historical foundations, okay? The urban division, sorry, paragraph B. Eliezer, just, just tell me if you want to go back to the text, okay? You want me to go back, you want me to go back or us to go back to the paragraph for your answer in letter B, okay? I mean, in paragraph B, you said urban division, but the answer is six historical foundations. Okay, what do you mean? What do you mean by yes? You want me to go back to the paragraph? Okay, we can go back for sure, no problem. Okay, or maybe you said you mean yes. You will contact or relay this to Lori. All right, I can give you a link too, so Lori can watch for herself. Then paragraph C is nine or I X. You said colonization. IX is the residences of the ruler. Sorry, law. Sorry, uh, Eleazar, but it's okay. Paragraph D, yep, really to uh, relate to her. Okay, you can relate to Laurie. Okay, paragraph oh, also Eleazar, do you want to uh do you want to go back to the paragraph for your answer in number two and number three? I can go back there if you want me to. Okay, then paragraph B, it says three, you answered town facilities, it's urban divisions. Okay. Paragraph E, you said I for yeah, let's go back, Eliazar. Okay, paragraph E, it's domestic arrangement. It's I4, domestic arrangement, architectural. Anyway, Eliazar for paragraph B C D E will go back. Okay. 
Eleazar, you said urban division. And then the answer says, uh, for paragraph B, the answer is six. It's historical foundations. Okay. So let's look at paragraph B. Let's read through. The answer should be historical foundations. Okay. Eleazar, first three words, Eleazar, it says in the 19th century. Okay, it already says, so this one indicates, in, it considers, it is bringing you back to history. It is bringing you back to the past. That will be your clue, Eleazar, that it could be about uh, number six. But anyway, let's continue, okay? Because urban divisions, it's just it just talks about the structure of the place, okay? It just talks about the structure, purely the structure, how it looks like, how it is divided. You know, division like in the houses division, that's what is meant by divisions, urban divisions. Because it's urban, it says city. Okay, like city divisions. Anyway, in the 19th century, most towns were heavily fortified and the foundations of these walls are sometimes visible. Ah, there are foundations. Uh, walls of the city, okay? It doesn't mean walls that divides them. Okay, no, it's the walls. I mean, the, uh, you remember the movie of Helen of Troy? You remember the city of Helen of Troy? It has high walls, right? That is what is meant by walls here. Collecting tolls to enter and exit through the walls was a major source of revenue, like taxes, collecting collecting toll fees. In the modern times, we have the, call this the toll fees. For the old town rulers, as were market fees. The markets were generally located centrally and in small towns, while in large towns, there were permanent stands made of corrugated iron or concrete. The market was usually next to the local ruler's palace. So... This one, 19th century, this talks about historical foundations, okay? Actually, among the choices, what word here talks about 19th century, talks about the past? I think their clue here is 19th century and the historical foundations, okay? Is this clear now, Eliezer? Is letter paragraph B clear now? If it's clear now, let's proceed to paragraph C, okay? Yes. All right. The palaces were often very large, okay? For letter C, the answer is number nine. It's clear. Thank you, Elizar. Number nine is the residences of the rulers, okay? The answer should be number nine. The palaces were often very large. Okay, that's first. In 1930s, the area of Oyo's palace. So it talks about Oyo. Oyo is a person, okay? So most likely, you may assume that Oyo may be a resident, okay? And then, and then palace. So your clue here is palace, palaces. Then rulers, okay? Then Oyo, another, Oyo's palace. Then it says here the residences, okay? Or the houses or the living places covered 17 acres. So you see, and consisted of a series of courtyards surrounded by private and public rooms. Many of the palaces who were completely or partially demolished, often the rulers built two-story houses for themselves. So, I hope you consider this time, Eleazar, that for paragraph C, it talks about buildings, it talks about houses, it talks about courtyards, it talks about Oyo's palace, it talks about uh, the rooms, public rooms, private rooms. So, definitely, it's the residences of the rulers, how their houses look like. So, is paragraph C clear now, Eleazar? So, I'll go to paragraph D, okay? Anyway, let me just continue. Paragraph D, the town is divided into different sections. In some towns, wait, the answer for paragraph B is, yes, it's clear. Thank you, Elizar. The answer is urban divisions. Why? Ah, this one, Elizar, I got the, the clue here. I mean, the hint here that your answer is urban divisions is this one. The town is divided into different sections. Different sections mean divisions, all right? Divided into different sections. I hope, Eliazar, the first sentence is now clear to you, okay? In some towns, these are regular, extending out from the center of the town like spokes on a wheel, while in others where space is limited, they are more random. The different areas are further. So this means different areas, different areas within the town. So you see, this now proves that your town has divisions or urban divisions, all right? These are... Uh, 
further divided into compounds. So you see, first clue is your different sections. Then here, divided. So I think this is your best clue, divided and division. So Eleazar, for the matching headings section of the reading test, you just have to match or look for keywords, all right? I think that's it. These vary in size. Okay, they tend to be larger in the north, large area, so it's comparing now the divisions. Okay, so Eleazar, hope letter paragraph D is now clear to you, okay? I'll now proceed to paragraph E. The answer says four architectural home styles, okay? So let's take paragraph E. Houses are rectangular. Yes, it's also clear. Okay, Eleazar, for paragraph E, I think the clue is here. Houses are rectangular. It's now... I'm giving you an idea how they look like. So it's for architectural homes. Style. What is the style of their homes or their rooms? Okay. Uh, or their rooms come off a central corridor. Most social life occurs in courtyard. They're usually built of hardened mud. How, what's their materials made of? Have roofs of corrugated iron and then, or thatch in the countryside. You know, thatch is like the, Grass is a form of grass. Like, how do I describe it? The Bahai Kubo in the Philippines, it's, they are likely similar. Buildings of this material are easy to alter, either by knocking down rooms or adding new ones, and can be improved by coating the walls with cement. So it's now talking about the style, architectural home style. I hope this, you see here, of concrete blocks, and if they can afford to build two-story houses. Within compounds, there are quite a mixture of building types. So I think this time, Eleazar, paragraph E is clear to you, right? Am I right, Eleazar? Okay, so anyway, so that's paragraph E. I hope this time you now get it clearly. Okay, so good job, Eleazar. I'll now proceed. Yeah, very good. So I'll just leave you with this reminder, Eleazar. Number one, don't expect to remember every word. Okay, no, don't remember. Like, we had a trouble in part one. I think it was about... Sentence completion, um, you said like, oh, we missed, I just relied on my memory, Laurie said, okay? So anyway, don't expect to remember every word, that's normal. Read the instructions care very carefully, okay? Because in the reading te test or part of the test, there are some parts are like about uh, about diagram labeling, um, sentence completion, true, false, not given. So be very careful of the instructions. There are different instructions in each type of test. Number three, don't panic. Timing is crucial. Do you panic, Eliezer? I think you don't. Number four, ignore anything you already know about the topic. You remembered earlier, you said like blank, blank equals 11%. You did the computation. Remember, in the reading test, it has nothing to do with how we understand, with how we compute. We rely merely on what is written or found on the text. Okay? So ignore anything you already know. Number five, be careful when transferring your answers, okay? Like if you are answering on a piece of paper first, be careful when you transfer. If it's letter B, be sure it's letter B there on the answer sheet, okay? Because you have your answer sheet. Number six, leave no blanks. You may leave difficult questions for the end to maximize your time. Meaning, um, make sure that you answered all the numbers consecutively. Like from 1 to 10, you did not miss any number. If you think number 4 is really very difficult, then maybe answer it at the end, but be sure to go back to it later. Leave no blanks, yet you may leave difficult questions for the end, okay? As much as possible, answer all of them as you go through. Okay, reminder number 7. Get better at scanning and skimming. What is scanning? Scanning is reading not word for word. Sometimes you don't need to read the text for each, I mean word by word. Just moving the eyes across the text to find the important information is okay. That is scanning. While skimming is reading the passage to get the general idea of the content, okay? You just have to read the passage through to get the general idea. Remember in the last part, the matching headings part, you can do skimming. But sometimes scanning, you can do this in the label. You remember the diagram labeling? Yes, you can apply it, number seven. And reminder number eight, be cool with vocabulary as this isn't a vocabulary test. Relax, okay? Uh, Eliezer, by the way, do you have questions? Because I am about to end, okay? If you have questions, just type it here. Or let me ask you about, if not question, a comment, or let me ask you about 
your insights. What are your insights or what are the lessons that you still want to know so I can prepare for it? None. Thank you so much, Eliazar. But do you have insights? Okay, be cool with vocabulary. If you think that the vocabulary are too difficult to understand, be cool. This is not a vocabulary test, okay? If you know the strategy and the technique, how to answer them, then you can get the correct answer. You know, sometimes you don't need to understand everything, every sentence. You just have to get the uh, the keywords, like in the matching headings part, you remember it? But you just have to find the keywords. So last is right practice makes perfect. So reading test, even if it depends on your own comprehension, you need to practice reading over and over again. Uh, like Laurie said earlier, like um, you have to read most, I mean, all of the time while you are still practicing or preparing for the IELTS. Good luck. So here is the need more practice, right? So this is the scoring system because I gave you 40 items, right? Each of the 40 questions is worth one point, depending on how many points you gain. You can receive a score from zero to nine points for the reading section. So out of 40 items, look at this. This is the table, how they scored it. If you get only four or five out of 40 questions, your score is 2.5. Your IELTS band score is 2.5, okay? Six to seven is three. I hope you get, uh, hey, Eliazar, can you count how many scores, how many check answers you have? Uh, Lori also, Lori, if you're watching, even if it's late, uh, can you count or sum up your scores from number one question until number 40? Can you check, Lori? And Eliazar, can you count? If you got, let's say, 35 over 40, your IELTS band score is 8. Good thing if you got 39 over 40, like only one mistake or no mistake at all, you get perfect 9 band score. Woo -hoo. Okay, I don't know what's your score about. I am watching. I missed out the last part, I think. Oh, Lori, sorry. Anyway, so Lori, you can review this. You, re you can review, I mean, the video. Okay, you can watch this video. I'll give you the link. Uh, Lori, is it okay if I will not go back anymore? Because uh, aside from being tired, I still need to eat. I missed my dinner, okay? Anyway, I think you can understand. So, Laurie, don't worry because you can go back to this uh, video again to watch the, the last part, okay? So, again, I am now in the scoring system, okay? Uh, if you get a score, sure, no problem. Thank you, Laurie. Nice to meet you here. And Eliezer, also, thank you. If you get a score of 30, your band score is 7, okay? I think you're good at this. You understand this already, okay? Do you have more questions, Lori and Eliazar? Yeah, you're right. You need more practice, okay? So thank you so much. If you don't have questions, these are my sources. You can do follow-up readings, okay? And then thank you so much. Take your skills to the next level. For now, none, okay? Don't forget uh, to subscribe to my channel if you want, but not necessary for you, okay? I mean it's up to you all right thank you if you have no questions i have to go now i have to say bye bye and then wait but you ought to see me first <laughs> okay there if you don't have questions anymore thank you so much for say for tuning in and then i'll see you next time our speaking practice will be via zoom because i want to hear you also um, just forgive me for this. We need to use the YouTube live stream because I have students from other places and they said that, thank you, okay. Thank you, and they said that they are more convenient using this in their place, okay? Anyway, so thank you so much. And I am very happy that despite the internet problem earlier, you, stay, you still stay tuned, you still stay tuned in. Okay, anyway, I'm really tired now. God bless you guys and... Uh, my plan is I'll send you in a PDF form. Form yeah. in a PDF form. I mean, I'll send you through email. Please give me your email address. Okay, log uh, Type in here your email address. I'll send you for further readings. Okay, and future readings as well for your reading practice. Anyway, thank you. And this has been Teacher Alfred saying bye bye and God bless you. Eliazar, is everything okay? Score is thirty. Wow. So thirty. It's like. Band 8 or band 9, I think. Let me go back to it. 30. Wow, it's band 7 for your first try. Considering this is just your first try or first attempt, that's good enough, uh, Laurie. That's good enough. 
Eleazar, I wonder about your score. What about you, Jobel? What's your score? So anyway, so finally, I have to say bye-bye and end this live stream, okay? Bye, guys, and again, thank you. See you next time.